Hello everyone, my name is Steve. I'm the, the owner of the Atari series uh, for basic and assembly language programming which I put out a couple months ago. I've seen some pretty good reviews on it and people getting asking me a lot of questions and stuff. Now I really would like to get more of those videos out at this time but if you can kind of look in the background here out of observation you can see that I'm in the middle of moving right now. So everything's kind of scattered from left to right everywhere. But I'm really passionate about this and I really want to continue this series again. I also started a, well I finally landed a contract position in software development and I've been doing that for about a month now. That's going pretty well. So what this, this um, video here is going to be about for those who, it's basically going to take a, a recess for a minute from what we've been currently doing and I'm going to kind of make this um, a review series and I'm going to teach you a little bit about the Atari computer and some of the stuff I know about it. Now granted this stuff can be you know googled and stuff like that but I just wanted to kind of give you an introspect of how I've seen things and what I've learned about the Atari computer and some of the things you may not even be able to find on Google. Hopefully I can contribute something here that's a, a worth to people instead of just wondering where's all your tutorial videos. Yeah I know they're coming but gotta get out of this place first. So anyways let's kind of get started without any further introduce. So what I'm going to do is move the camera down here a little bit. Last time I turned it off. This camera's got a turn off switch right at the top, so if you hit it, it turns off everything and I have to start over again. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of angling it here and I'm going to kind of just hold this up. This is the Atari 800 computer. Uh, because actually it's Atari 800XL, it doesn't really come in very good here. This is a bad angle for me here. So you can kind of see it has a, a keyboard, just like a regular PC and everything. It's actually got keys in the same similar position you would find on a typewriter and stuff like that. If you take and look here and observe, you'll see this uh, control button here. Now I'd like to demonstrate this on person to a screen, but I don't know how the capability to do that right now with everything all packed up and everything. So the control key, if you hold down the control key, and if you look, um, I don't know if it's on these keys, let me see. No, it's not on these keys, but sometimes they'll show underneath here the different character codes you can actually pick up. So basically, if you hold the control and you press like a key like that, it's, it'll basically show a, a character that's in memory. It's known as an Axie character. And you can actually access all of them from A to Z and a lot of these other ones. Here we go, actually, right here. Uh, no, I thought so. Excuse me, I thought they were showing on there. But basically, it'll be characters that when you press on them. You'll see them. And if you want to get a better idea of what those characters are here, I've got my handy book here. I've showed this before, but look at this page right here. These are the access the actually character set. So earlier I said, um, let me get to the A here since I mentioned A. Uh, oh, it's right here at the bottom. Oh, no, that was at the top. Oh, excuse me. My bad. Okay, so if you look here at the top where it says Control A there. Come on. And you see it says... Uh, that little character which says Axi character, it's actually pronounced Axi. I do believe that's how it's pronounced. It might be Akasi, but I don't believe so. Um, unless it's Japanese. Um, if you look right there, it says Control A, and it actually has to code 1 and all that. That's what I'm talking about. Those characters can be produced, anyways, by holding Control and just pressing these keys. And that's how you get them out. So basically, if you want to navigate, if you want to basically move the arrows around, Another thing you'll want to do for the control key is you hold down control and you just press these arrow buttons and you can move around on the basic screen and stuff like that. Now if you want to freeze the screen, I hope I'm correct on this, you, you hold control and I do believe you press one like that and that should freeze like a listing if you have a listing going down the screen. Um, I might be wrong, maybe it's two. One of these is the buzzer too, I forget. Um, let me see if I was actually doing it in real person. So if I wanted to... Yeah, that's how I would actually freeze it. I think the buzzer's over here or something. I don't know. But anyways, that's kind of um, the review I wanted to show you of that, the first part here. And obviously, everything else is kind of similar. If you want to change the inverse, which is basically reverting what the characters look like, you press this button here in the bottom corner. Again, excuse me, it's not the greatest um, zoom in or anything here. I don't have a zoom in option. Right here, and this will change the the outline basically will put a shadow or a mask if you would around the characters so everything else is kind of given uh, clear break stops the program stuff like that so 
that's kind of the review on that part. Here's a cartridge where you can um, insert regular 8-bit um, cartridges. And if you look over here, these are known as the, the console buttons. And there's got a reset, which basically, if you hold reset also for a while, it'll do something called a code start which basically will reboot your computer so you lose any information so make sure you save if you want to test that you can also um, before you boot up while you're um, waiting for the computer to load here uh, where's that you hold down this button called help you'll go into the self start mode which you can do a diagnostic check okay you've also got the start button which also works with the, the diagnostic select option and also these can be programmed at your own wills of course okay so that's that part now if you look over here to the side, I'm going to have to probably pull it up here a little bit. Am I on the wrong side? I'm on the wrong side. Okay, if you look over here to the side there, you'll see there's little ports there that can actually insert a joystick. You can insert a paddle. You can even insert a keypad, which I did actually want to show you because I actually have those here right now. I'll go over those in a minute because I wanted to kind of keep this um, consistent with what I'm showing you about the Atari computer for now. Um, the back here, these are basically the... Um, BIO, the, the input output. So basically, you've got the um, the power button, power in. You've got the channel that's for the old TV switch boxes, and you've got the switch box. Speaking of which, right there, which hooks up right directly to the the RF output for the switch box, and you've got the monitor for people who have the monitors. And of course, you have the parallel bus. I believe that was for the printer. Uh, and peripheral, that's for like the disc drives. Um, cassette recorders or anything else that you know operates on those IO inputs so those are your IO basically controls okay so there's the Atari and um, to kind of stay um, in the path here I wanted to show you some of the things I think it's all tangled up here this is a Atari joystick this one's called a point master I don't recommend getting this if you see this on Google it's not a very good um, contraption if you ask me because it's just the maneuverability is really funny on this. I like the older ones where the joystick's, you know, more closer to to your level and you can kind of, you know, you gain more control, kind of like the N Nintendo was popular for. Okay, and obviously you see on the back here, the plug-in goes right into the side there. So you just plug it in and everything. Okay, so that's, um, that's one, um, if I brought up made a joystick here or not. Oh, well, I guess I'm only going to show you that joystick. Okay, so what I was mentioning next about the paddles. These are paddles. They were pretty popular on the Atari 2600 series. Um, kind of see them there. And they got little buttons to control stuff on the side. And you have this little um, dial here where you basically turn it kind of like a steering wheel circular motion. And you could m control objects, you could, excuse me, like uh, game characters and vehicles or whatever that game was tied to. You can also... I'd like to get into this maybe later. The paddles can be even programmed on the Atari home computer. Obviously, anything you can do on the Atari 2600, you can do on your Atari home computer. You just have to have the, the know-how, basically. Okay, and actually, you know, I did find the other joystick. This is the one I wanted to show you. I like this one. I got this on eBay. It's, um, well, it doesn't have its um, manufacturer name on it. But if you kind of look at it, you can get a better view of it. Let me hold it back there a little bit. That's kind of what it looks like. And you see how the handle is smaller, it gives you more motion, more control, it kind of makes like clickety clicks on, but you know, it, it's, it's really nice. I've had a better joystick than this, but I, I think this one's it's doable. Okay, so this one is uh, pretty cool. I got this on eBay too, Now I've never owned one of these, at least not on the Atari computer, I owned one on the 2600, but this is the, the keypad controller, and you can actually control these buttons directly believe it or not on the Atari home computer as well you just have to tap in and of course I've explained this before um, this book right here is called map in the Atari and here are the, the um, basically this is the, the Atari Bible if you would and this allows you to navigate within the internals of the Atari um, anything from devising your own controls um, you can also do a lot of assembly coding and like I said, you can gain control of the I.O. printer, anything, and obviously gain control of stuff like this. So that's kind of cool. So, um, I'm going to, guess I'm going to, let me make sure I've covered the Atari 
I don't want to lack anything here. I guess there's really not a whole lot more. It's got vents on the back here. Proper ventilation and I was going to prop this one open but it's kind of sealed tight and I'm not going to go messing with it right now. So, But the Atari internally has its own special chipset. Um, one of them, there's one called the Pokey, if I can kind of recall this. The Pokey is the sound chip. It controls all the sound channels which is basically 8-bit but had the ability to convert it to, in those days, 16-bit. Uh, okay, and then you also have what's called the Antic chip, which controls the graphics. Um, I'm not a total hardware guy, so I'll probably leave it there, unless anything else comes to mind of the other chips, the regular 6502 chip, I guess you would call it, or whatever. But those are the kind of um, the things that built the Atari. I mean, I think it was an incredible machine for its time. They, these people were very revolutionary that built this. They were way ahead of their time. Um, obviously, it's very sturdy. It's very sound. You know, it's it's a very nice. Um, people call it a toy now, but actually, in those days, it was actually used in business and the real world. But you know, it was it was a game machine. Let's admit it. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you, since I have it all out here right now is you've seen me use this many times and you obviously know what this one is this is the Atari um, 1050 disk drive you basically take um, what are called five and a quarter inch discs this right here is a five and a quarter inch disc because remember the black ones and you basically stick it in the slot right here and you just close the door like that and then you can send load commands to retrieve the the, the contents of the disc Okay, now this one, I think I grabbed them all here. Let me see if I got this. Yeah, I got it right here. This one is your, um, the most essential disc. It's called the Atari DOS 2.5. Without this, you can't boot in and you can't save anything to your hard drive unless you have it written already as a boot sector on, on a disc somewhere. Uh, what's called a DOS dupe, or dupe DOS, dupe sys, whatever they called it in those days. So that's basically uh, the Atari. It's got this one has a power switch on the back. Oh, excuse me, on the, the bottom here. I like that's kind of convenient where it is. It's not sitting in the way of anything here. Um, on the back here, very similar. You've got the same plug-in ports, which plug directly from this to the computer, and this also, excuse me, this to a printer. And then you've got the the drive select. I never really used this one. Actually, you know what? Mine's missing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it fell down or something. But oh well, it's not important, I guess. I've never really used it, so I wouldn't bother with it. Um, then you've got the power button it's over here. Obviously, it plugs the the power adapter in. That's pretty much how that is for that device. Uh, what I wanted to do next is um kind of review some of the books and stuff that I've used on my channel. I've already showed you how to see the map in the Atari book, which is pretty darn cool here. I'm going to kind of move the camera up here a little bit. Um, this is the map in the Atari book, obviously. And this one I showed you earlier with the Axie codes in it. This is it's the Atari owner's guide. It's your owner's manual. Look down here, says the owner's manual. This is, I think this is really a, a nice um, documentation they created for the Atari in those days, if you would because um, it really helped me get my first start and helped me develop my passion for programming which you get a lot of real simple examples here but they kind of get you set in a direction to cover at least some um, maybe not a gist but you know a portion of what you could really learn about basic programming they don't do any assembly programming so they keep it very you know simple but it's got also in the back here I've showed you already the Axie code it's got error messages you can look up error messages um, it's got an index, obviously most books do have an index. Uh, anything else? <laughs> here's, here's something that's un non-existent. <laughs> Customer support <laughs> in those days. <laughs> Alright, so that's that. Now when I first got into basic programming, I, I used to go to this Atari shop in, when I lived in Akron, Ohio called the Magic One Computer Shop. And I remember the first time I bought this one. Now this one right here, I actually purchased later on eBay. My original was in no condition like this one is. It's, it was 
basically I used it so much it was in poor condition if you would. So this one is really cool though because it's, it's called the Computes First Book of Atari Graphics. It's even got some of the old games in it. This is the, I can't remember this, the drop zone or whatever. Um, and then you've got um, the animation for the Cowboys. You've got another game. Actually, this is the same game right there. Parachute, whatever that name of that game was. And it's it's a really nice setup here. If you kind of look at the index here, I'll kind of pull to, excuse me. Not the index, I meant the, um, the beginning here. It kind of shows you some of the stuff that you would cover in this book. Again, you can Google these things. You can read all these online. I just wanted to show you. I'm a book person, so I like to go out and actually purchase the original books. Since I, I'm, it, there was a day before Google, obviously, and well, we bought books in those days. Okay, so chapter one, fundamentals of Atari graphics, kind of goes into some of the basics. You'll learn about it. Then we got customizing the graphics modes. Redefining character sets is really good. That's where you get into designing your own characters for games and stuff like that. Animation with graphics, that's pretty good. Um, animation of player missile graphics that I've demonstrated on my channel. That's where you can control those individual bits and turn them into characters and stuff like that. And then down here, you've got the advanced techniques. So it even goes into the advanced to the basic all the way through. It does a pretty good uh, coverage of what you really need to at least get going as um at least kind of a beginner to an intermediate programmer for the Atari computer. Okay, now I wanted to sneak this one in. This is going to kind of um, detract a little bit from where we are, but for those who are interested in the Commodore 64, I programmed on the Commodore 64, and like the book I showed you earlier, the map in the Atari, which at mat maps all the addresses in the Atari computer, this one does the same, except on the Tom... The Commodore 64 is called Mapping the Commodore C64. It's a great book. I recommend find a PDF if you can online. I'm sure it probably exists. Well, again, I'm just um, a book savvy type person. So now, also in those days when I was learning to program in BASIC back in the 80s, um, like I said, this is before Google. This is before practically the internet. We had BBS in those days. But what I would do when I wanted to get more material other than buying books and when I lacked the funds, I would actually go to the library, the public library, and I'd pick up books there. And this one I came across, I remember the first time I saw it, Machine Language for Beginners, when I first got into machine language programming. And man, this was like a, a dime a dozen. I mean, this book is a really great guide. I'll show you the beginning. Again, you can PDF it, obviously. Uh, the table of contents here. Um, I don't want to tear it up. I try to take really good care of my books now. Um, it kind of goes into it, says how to use this book, the fundamentals, the monitor. You've seen me in um, the Mac 65 using the DDT assembler. That's basically what the monitor is. It allows you to see the hexadecimal or the internal workings that's going on behind in the machine code and all that, or the instructions. Then you have addressing. That's where you get into like load the accumulator with this value, media value, and you can do a lot of stuff there, addressing direct memory. Arithmetic, that's stuff like the add with carry, um, excuse me, yeah, add with carry, subtract, um, ASL, which is um, your addition, and LSR is your division, stuff like that for the assembly. And then you've got the uh, bar in from basic, that's where you can kind of manipulate. I showed that in my video too, where I could peek and poke and also use data statements to read directly from Atari Basic into assembly language, and that's basically what they're doing there too, is that they even build their own little um, disassembler that you can use to kind of see the code if you don't have a disassembler, because like the Commodore 64, which had some pretty nice plugins and some pretty good diskette sets, the Atari kind of lacked that, and I don't know if they ever really had a cartridge other than Mac 65 that really showed you the internal workings, but... The other thing here is uh, building a program, machine language equivalents. You'll see down here there's um, appendices for instruction set, maps, blah, blah, blah. And just, some, just, again, it's a really great guide. If you're interested in taking your first start in assembly machine language, keep in mind machine language is the zeros and ones. That's the binary, and the computer only sees the instructions that you've seen me type in other programs, other tutorial examples where you've seen stuff like... Um, data 104 169 comma 0 141 comma 0 comma 212 whatever those are um, data statements that directly talk to the computer's assembly language and allow you to run 
code at a faster rate. So it's got, it talks about that. And basically that's what I was mentioning about assembly language is when you see stuff like load accumulate with zero, store it in 710 or increment this value or whatever. That's, that's basically what, what that means when you hear assembly language. So. And like I said, it's a great guide, so I recommend that book. Um, kind of, kind of go ahead here. I guess I'll go to this one next because I did get this one. I also never bought this one originally. Back in the days, um, books were pretty hard to come by and kind of expensive sometimes, and sometimes had a limited shelf life where you really couldn't get that book and really couldn't get it. It was a good seller, then you couldn't get it in the stores very easily. It would just sell out or whatever. This one's called the Atari Computer Atari Collection, as you can see here. Volume 1. I think they made these up to a Volume 3, if I'm not mistaken. And this one is really great. I'll show you the index again, and once again, feel free to PDF it. This one has two pages of, I keep saying index, the contents. This one shows you the um, getting started. You heard me talk about peaks and pokes. This is kind of explaining for the peaks and pokes people who are interested in it. And it goes into a lot of peeking and poking. Um, simple joystick routine. You can see music editors, enjoying Tari variables. Kind of read down there. Color matcher, proofreader. Now for the games part, you got Nessie. And that's like the Loch Ness Monster kind of thing. And then you've got Tank. You've seen that in my... Um, I have on my channel here where I, I pulled apart the data statements for that game to show you how to do some tricks with it. And then you got dots, reversey, dollars from heaven, box hunt. Dragon's Den is really cool. Memory match. Then you got an education section. And then it goes down here to the back. And it shows you um, art class. That's for the education there. Um, applications for those who are interested in when we got into the business application of things, they had stuff like shopping lists were popular in those days. Obviously these are home applications and whatever. And then you've got tape and disc utilities too. So it's a great book to kind of get you a step up from the other books that kind of, you know, get your, your like we're going for the Atari. Now this one was really, really popular back in the days and it was kind of, kind of sat out there and was kind of easy to get a hold of. Uh, basic Atari Basic. It has a lot of coverage here, and again, feel free to PDF it. Uh, let's see what the content show on this one. This shows you the um, stuff like the Atari editor. You can see it there. Calculations, input, read data statements. I've showed those on my channel. It kind of, you know, it kind of gets you started. If you're very new to the Atari computer, maybe you've um, downloaded an emulator, found your favorite Atari emulator, and you want to get started, or you're like me, you've actually found a good uh, Atari hardware component and bought one, Atari machine. And then it'll get you going, learning how to, to program in basic and stuff like that. <coughs> Hopefully you can develop a passion for it. <coughs> That's why I know so much about it, because I was very obsessed with it. I mean, I programmed, I probably mentioned this before, but I programmed on Atari for probably about, let's see, maybe six, seven. I'd say about four or five years before I got into the Commodore 64. So I was, I pretty much had a pretty good span of things, and I, I, I've never, I've really never lost that since I've, I put so much investment in it. I guess it's still there for me, and I've kind of rehashed some of the things that I didn't know, but it's, it was just a passion for me. So I can teach it pretty well. This is also the content. Oh, let's skip ahead here. This is another book I wanted to show you. Um, this one is pretty cool. This was a hard to find book in those days. It's called The Advanced Programming Techniques for the Atari, including graphics and voice programs, the Atari computer. So this one has, um, it gets you into learning about stuff like display list interrupts. I do believe it covers, what you, I know it covers redefined character sets here. I'll go over here and show you them. Let's look at the contents, obviously. Okay, so the contents right here, and you can PDF it again. You got working with numbers, working with the display list, as I mentioned there. Um, graphics, principles of animation, looking at basic, tricks with strings, that's really cool. Display list interrupts, the next step up from display list. Scrolling, that's awesome. Page flipping, uh, let's see what else we have here. And then we've got 
Oops, I'm blocking myself now. I can't even see here. I got sound generators, interpreting the keyboard, understanding the screen editor disk use, cassette use. So anyways, it goes into a lot of good coverage for people who want to take a, a, a step up from their intermediate and move to the advanced level and start writing, you know, their own assembly language games and stuff like that or assembly language applications or education or whatever you decide to, whatever your, whatever is your passion there. So it's a great book. And that's kind of it, I do believe. Um, one thing I could really show you is, um, I, th I did kind of go over the diskettes earlier, but these are just some of the diskettes I found online. This one's called um, the Space Disk, and it has a lot of great software. W when I um, did an eBay auction one time, I came across this and was pretty fortunate to get the auction, to win the auction and everything. And ended up, they ended up sending me about 60 discs, no joke. And each one has probably about, we were looking at about what, maybe... 20, 30, or 40 different applications on it, even including the back and stuff like that. So it's a great, great coverage of things. I'm hoping one day to maybe go over some of those programs and stuff like that. But I don't know if I have the time and everything, but I guess that's about it. So I wish I had um, some tutorials to show you. This was obviously a short session here. Um, just um, stay, stay tight and kind of um, be patient with me through this transition in my life and I'll try to get some Atari stuff back out here once I find time to do that in between working on this work project at work and everything or actually I'm um, building an API interface for a system and everything so anyways I just hope you enjoyed this and um, we'll get around to that that next uh, step very soon here so thank you for watching